refresher course, if you will, uh, on the website with Sean Flanagan. From that point, we'll move to our divisional new parent orientations, and that, of course, includes our transitioning students coming into sixth grade, moving up to fifth to sixth, and from eighth to ninth as well. So those will be, as I'll talk about, in the dining hall uh, with Dr. Martin afterwards, uh, beginning there, and then for the middle school with Mr. Ketchum. And then, of course, lower school has a little bit of a different schedule, which we'll discuss as well. Good morning. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and board, and the community of Randy School, welcome to the new year. Welcome to new families, welcome to our returning families, those changing divisions. We're so excited to have all of you here today. We're very excited to have your students today and tomorrow uh, in orientations beginning the 2018-19 school year. This year is Randy School's 68th year, and we are so excited about many things that are ahead, about some great changes uh, and opportunities that lie ahead for us. So as we prepare for our opening, let's talk a little bit about the schedule for our students in all three divisions. Uh, right now, our freshmen are in Thompson Park, where they are doing uh, an orientation uh, and some bonding activities for the day as, as transitioning students to the upper school. Uh, it is a little bit ironic, maybe a perverse irony, that the first day, or the last day of summer, feels like it is the first day, or in the middle of summer, with 90 degree temperatures. Uh, in all of these orientations, a lot of outdoor activities, but we promise that we'll keep them well hydrated, and uh, we'll keep them busy, but we'll keep them safe. So the freshmen will be doing that. Uh, during the retreat, they'll have a chance to develop their leadership skills, uh, to interact with their peers. One of the distinguishing features of this very large ninth grade class is that there are a, a large number of students who've been with us for a long time, including lifers, but a very large group of new students transitioning in. So we want to take that opportunity for those students to really get to know each other and the wonderful upper school faculty, advisors, and coaches. Our other upper school students, uh, 10th through 12th, will be coming to campus for us tomorrow where they'll do on-campus retreats. Uh, and our seniors have a kind of mini retreat tonight with just some games and activities. And again, bonding, getting ready for a great senior year. Our middle schoolers, if you're a middle school parent, will start with short classes tomorrow. Uh, and they will have next week their traditional retreats. So sixth grade will be on campus on Monday and Tuesday, here doing activities and team building and leadership training. Uh, and then they will be, uh, the sixth, excuse me, the seventh grade will be at Camp Bernie for an overnight outdoors activities, experiences, and so forth. Uh, and then uh, the eighth grade uh, will be in Philadelphia for next Tuesday and Wednesday. So of course we're off for uh, the long weekend with Rosh Hashanah Monday, and then we start in earnest with the middle school retreats Tuesday and Wednesday. So again, all of those activities we're looking forward to in the next few days. Our youngest learners actually have a little bit of a different schedule this year, and our new parents to the lower school, uh, they'll start tomorrow as usual, but today we have conferences uh, for our lower school families. We're very excited about Dr. Daniel's addition to the program in doing that. So having a, a chance for new, uh, as well as returning lower school families, to meet with their teachers on, you know, prior to the first day, to talk about planning, aspirations for the year, concerns, relief anxiety, uh, and just welcome them into their new classes, their new spaces, uh, with our wonderful Lower School faculty. So today, we'll have conferences in those classrooms, uh, and they will also be meeting, of course, their new friends uh, tomorrow as a group. We did a lot of classroom renovations this summer that you'll see, uh, particularly in the lower school. A major change there uh, was the introduction of a new technology, the next generation of smart boards. Again, we're very committed, as like all good schools are, to the appropriate use of technology to support instruction. You know, all of us who teach, who work in the classroom, are very uh, keen on using the best tools and resources available. And from that perspective, we've done a lot of updates in technology this summer, particularly in the lower school. So if you're a lower school family, you will notice that uh, in the classroom today, so you're going to meet your teachers. And of course, next week, uh, at the Meet the Teacher Nights, you'll see that demonstrated as well. The other uh, renovations, substantial renovations we did this summer, are in the, what we used to call the Little White House, or the Art Building, right in front of the campus. Uh, so we did a major renovation in that space, a new art studio uh, and a kind of porch terrace that overlooks the pond in front to allow students to engage with nature, to do uh, live painting and drawing, uh, plain air as you will, if you will. So it's a wonderful space, beautiful space with visual arts. Uh, all of that building has been renovated over the course of two years. Uh, the other addition to that space uh, two years ago was the maker space. 
that many of you have may, may have seen in the, the lower part of that building. And again, uh, particularly for middle and upper school students, they'll use that space a lot. That was renovated, uh, again, two years ago, and then we did some additional renovations this year. Of course, that class, uh, or that, that building, is really a representation of our commitment to STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Uh, and for that reason, the lower, school, the lower space of that building we're very excited about will also house a new engineering class that uh, I think may have, many of you may have heard about, offered to 10th through 12th graders. Um, and that engineering class taught by Tara Nalen, a uh, fabulous physics teacher, uh, she did her undergraduate degree in engineering, uh, and then a master's in physics at Princeton, really fabulous teacher. She's going to be using that space to introduce a new program called Engineer Your World. We're very excited about it. Uh, it is a program uh, from the University of Texas at Austin um, that introduces students to engineering concepts. Um, as you probably know, uh, just a little bit on the side here, we have a huge commitment to coding, to technology, to science, and engineering throughout the school. Uh, so beginning even with the programming of eBots for our little ones in three-year-olds and up, uh, it continues with the middle school. Robotics continues in lower and middle school. Uh, and then in uh, upper school, it's just a burgeoning program. We have, I think, out of an upper school population of uh, about 300 students. We have uh, 80, I think, who are signed up for computer science. Uh, electives of various types, and then robotics on top of that. So it is a very, very popular part of our offerings. Um, from that perspective, then, uh, it is also, um, there's also something new this year that we've been teasing really for a couple years. It's been in the planning stages. Uh, but we have two new kind of certificate courses, if you will, um, to allow students to specialize within the upper school to a degree without sacrificing our commitment to broad liberal arts training. So we are very committed to the best in terms of critical thinking and writing skills and presentation and quantitative skills and languages. But at the same time, we do believe that students who have a passion for one area should have the opportunity to pursue that area to a high level. Um, so again, known and value. That's the mission. And therefore, uh, we want to individualize those programs for students. So this year introduces the STEAM certificate program, again, which includes courses like engineering and coding and robotics, uh, other activities, independent studies, um, science opportunities for real research. Uh, and we're very excited too. I think we'll meet um, in the next day or two a new science chair uh, who's coming in, Dr. Rosette Roxanne Spencer. Uh, again, we're very excited about the work that she is going to do uh, in the science program. So, again, all of that is relatively new this year. Global studies, again, will also for sophomores through juniors or sophomores through seniors be available this year. And I think some students have grandfathered in, right? Uh, Dr. Martin will look over to him if they have done substantial coursework in those areas. Again, global studies, uh, it allows students to focus just a little bit more on that area, obviously, so a high level of language, uh, fluency, um, interest in our Global Citizens course, where we partner with the model, uh, excuse me, with the United Nations, uh, programs like Model United Nations, uh, Civics, and so forth, all of those are a big part of that uh, Global Studies program. So again, we're very excited about those options and the ways in which they enhance the, um, the curriculum here. There's also a new upper school program. I know, again, Dr. Martin will focus a lot on, uh, and since there are so many ninth grade uh, new parents or transitioning parents here, I'll mention this. I'm really excited after this is my sixth year at Randy that uh, after five years and a lot of planning, we've been able to introduce a kind of mini experiential education course right at the end of the year. I've seen this very successfully done in other places. Um, and it really reflects the ways in which we want our students to be engaged in the real world and to do real world work. So for two weeks at the end of the year, um, after APs, the kind of stress of those has dissipated a little bit. Uh, and with 20 AP classes in every school, a large number of students were in those classes. Uh, that obviously is a big focus. But um, as soon as those are done, our students in the upper school, 9th, 10th, and 11th grades, We'll choose from an array of mini courses for about uh, two weeks. Um, again, it'll be a slightly different calendar from the normal year. Uh, and in those courses, there'll be some international travel opportunities. Again, uh, as students sign up, we will uh, figure out what, which of those will go, uh, depending on numbers. But right now, it looks like opportunities will include a uh, humanities theater trip to England. Um, we're very excited about that with the Chair of English Department. A uh, trip to Iceland. 
focused on STEAM and environmental science. Again, a really hot destination right now, too, as it turns out. Um, if you've been following travel sections and things like that, but very exciting, so they'll be doing that trip. Um, we will likely have, um, not firmed up yet, but a trip to Dubai and to Abu Dhabi. Um, we established a relationship with uh, New York University's campus there in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so our students will go to study business, international business, and, and, and um, entrepreneurship for about two weeks uh, in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. So again, very exciting programs, and some domestic programs as well. So we'll have travel in the Southwest, with a photography component led by a really talented art teacher, um, Mr. Andrew Sullivan. Uh, there'll also be opportunities for community service locally, for other local classes, uh, and I think a class in Florida on environmental studies that we may call, I think the working title is Swamp Studies. So if you're interested in the Everglades, uh, the Oki Finoki, and other things, which would not be my choice, I have to say. I have a little bit of fear of, of, of reptiles. But in any case, if that is your thing, and, and alligators do not scare you, then that's a great one to do too. So uh, those are some of the, the big ones, and there are a lot of local options as well. But we're very excited about all of those programs. Uh, and I appreciate the work of uh, the upper school faculty, Dr. Martin, Mr. Matarasso, and all the folks who um, really contributed to designing that program. Um, and I'll mention, too, a special thanks to Ms. Uh, Murray Curry, who is the new chair of uh, the academic dean of the upper school. Um, and she is just fabulous. She's going to be leading the academic efforts, including May Mester. In addition to all of those programs that I mentioned, of course, we're very proud of our other extracurricular offerings. So we are nationally robot, uh, ranked robotics team, which I've mentioned a couple times already, is going to start the year very well under the tutelage and direction of a new teacher in the upper school, uh, Jim Gill, very experienced in both computer science uh, and will also be working with our robotics teams. Um, we'll also continue to have other clubs and activities in the lower and the middle school for robotics. We have burgeoning programs in music, and of course, uh, Dr. Sobieski uh, and several of the music, music folks are here today, this morning, so I encourage you to meet with them. We have award-winning programs in choral music, in concert band, the jazz band, and of course, in our orchestra. Our wonderful theater program has already announced its productions for the year. We're very excited about those. Uh, so this fall, uh, we will see a production of The Odd Couple, which I understand is actually um, a feminist take on The Odd Couple. So it's a, it's kind of the opposite version of the odd couple in terms of that may have a little bit to do with um, our numbers and presumed casting, I assume. But anyway, um, so the odd couple will be the ball production, great production, really excited about that. Um, the, upper, the middle school production, of course, is a musical traditionally in the fall, uh, and that will be Bye Bye Birdie, which uh, students are very excited about. Um, and then for the upper school musical, we will be doing uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein's um, Cinderella in the spring. We're very excited about that production, too. I think that provides a really nice opportunity for engagement and interaction across the divisions. So I'm sure that our upper school students will be working a lot with the lower school students um, in that production, uh, introducing themselves. I can imagine princess lunches and breakfasts and that kind of thing for our little ones. Uh, and then, of course, not to forget the lower school. Our lower school musical, which is for fourth and fifth grades, will be Judy B. Jones. And Kids are very excited about that. If you're a lower school parent or were there recently, had younger kids, you'll know those books. Uh, this is a musical version of it. Uh, now transitioning to fall sports. Again, we've had a great start uh, in all areas of fall sports as well, under the leadership of Natalie Gorman, uh, who came in last year as our athletic director, uh, who's doing a fabulous job. Our teams are going to benefit from the leadership of a record number of senior class, as well as a large freshman class, I already mentioned, with many uh, great student athletes. So our numbers in soccer on both the boys and the girls' side are really strong. The numbers in cross-country are encouraging. Field hockey uh, has had great numbers this year for us, which uh, has not always been the case. It's really swelled. Um, and then, of course, tennis is a perennial powerhouse here. Really proud of the tennis program. They're coming off a state championship last year, uh, and we expect them to do very, very well this fall as well. Uh, we expect to have several students in our senior class who are going to be very soon declaring uh, where they're going to pursue athletics at the next level. Uh, we're very excited about that as well, and it's a wide range. So we will have um, some players on our championship basketball team who will shortly be declaring where they're going, and we're very excited about that. But we're equally excited that we'll have students pursuing uh, sailing at the college level, and we'll have like, some very interesting offers. Fencing, we have a student who's already committed to Columbia. So again, we're very excited about those programs as well. 
Last week, the faculty returned and spent the week preparing for the arrival of, again, our new and returning students and families. Uh, we had a great week last week, last week great energy, uh, and we're continuing to build on the strength of the upper school, middle school, lower school, uh, faculty cultures. Um, so now, uh, I'm going to be relatively brief. I will have a few introductions to make. Um, and then we'll transition to, again, the program uh, with uh, Mr. Flanagan. So, um, Dr. Daniel, I think I mentioned, uh, is doing a slightly different version of the orientation today. So for um, new students, she's taking them on a kind of scavenger hunt. Uh, this is Reddington around the lower school campus, uh, around the whole campus, I guess. So that's where she will be right now. Uh, but if you've not already met Dr. Daniel, I know you'll have a lot of opportunities as lower school parents to interact with her in the next few days. Um, we're excited. She's going into her uh, fifth year at Randy. We're delighted to have her leadership in the lower school. Uh, very experienced um, teacher leader. Started out her career in Syracuse, a very good school. Uh, was at Episcopal Academy for a long time in Philly. Uh, we're delighted to recruit her five years ago now to, uh, to Randy. Uh, David Ketchum is here, of course, representing middle school. Um, David is in his second year as middle school head, uh, but is 18. 18th, I didn't want to get that wrong, 18th year at Randy, um, and we are so delighted to have uh, David again leading the middle school program um, as a teacher, a coach, an advisor, and hit the quality of his interactions with students, the expectations that he sets, the nurturing environment, but also with appropriate academic challenge. David's been a great addition in that role, uh, and, and I couldn't be more excited to be working with him in his second year, really gathering steam. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Martin, Greg Martin, came to join us last year. Uh, we're delighted to get to recruit him from uh, the West Coast, uh, from the Hoya Country Day School. Uh, he grew up in the Midwest uh, and was, again, a uh, division head um, there in California, an academic dean and technology director, some other things in, in Ohio before that. Um, so Dr. Martin has two roles here, again, if you're new, um, so you understand that he is both the upper school head uh, and works very close to Mr. Matarasso, Ms. Curry, the class deans, and others, uh, but he's also our assistant head for academics. So he works with the division heads in the coordination of all of our programs from three-year-old through 12th grade. So in that sense, uh, he, wear, he wears many hats and, and different roles. He is a Shakespearean by training, um, but he's very diverse in his academic interest, so he's going to be teaching, of course, this year in sort of game theory uh, and games in the upper schools in English elective. So and he's a broad, broad range of, of interests. It's also a pleasure to make a couple other introductions. Um, I'm not sure if they're here this morning, but I want you to be aware of who these folks are. Um, we have, of course, uh, transitions periodically in the Parent Association, the RSPA. Uh, we had wonderful leadership. We've had wonderful ongoing leadership there for many, many years. Um, and I wanted to introduce the new uh, president, um, again, even if she's not here, at least uh, uh, so that you're aware of who that is, Jennifer Andiorio, uh, who's the parent of two sophomore girls, the twins. Uh, she is, she's been very active in RSBA, extremely organized, and RSBA has always done a great job, but I think you've got the packet of all of the yearly events, the calendar. Um, and this is really a critical part of our parent engagement. So I would urge you um, to the extent that you have time and certainly have a passion and interest in getting involved in various opportunities on campus, whether those are volunteer opportunities or uh, opportunities to serve on committees. We have a large number of board committees that have parent representation on them in addition. Uh, it's kind of a training ground as well for the board. So um, I would urge you to be involved in those activities. Um, and again, I know that RSPA is in great hands with, uh, with Jenna and Diorio. Um, I'm sure that you have also received uh, your other packets about starting the year of events. Um, again, we'll be speaking a lot more about those. Uh, but I also want to mention, uh, we will have at least one or two opportunities this, morning, uh, this, this fall for you to interact with the Board of Trustees. So again, uh, I work very closely with the Board of uh, 13. It's a very strong uh, board. Um, Chris Fitzmorris, uh, who is a senior parent, Shen is graduating this year, is current chair of the board. Uh, and I know Chris would welcome interactions with you. Uh, and again, the board will be doing so then. So we'll try to actually um, provide a little more transparency, I hope, and uh, feedback. Uh, in terms of how our wonderful board functions and the kinds of things they're looking at. We're actually, it's a wonderful time, and we're coming off a strategic plan and about to start that process again. So um, it's an exciting time, again, for that leadership, and we really appreciate Chris as a volunteer leader. 
This year, um, really as always, we'll be focusing on major recurring themes, the continued development of our academic programs, and I think I spent the bulk of the time speaking about that. Our rigorous and innovative curriculum, again, we're very proud of that. Um, the continued focus on the exceptional faculty we have. Um, and again, by all measures, by all measures, I think the faculty are in a very good place. Uh, nearly 70% with advanced degrees, uh, lots of experience both at Manny and elsewhere, but most importantly, passionate engagement with the kids. Um, I'm very excited about all three divisions uh, and the wonderful teachers there. Uh, and then the final thing that, of course, we'll focus on is this, parent engagement, uh, parent opportunities for communication. Um, and with that, it seems like an appropriate transition then. Um, one of the biggest vehicles for our um, communication, of course, is the website. And so uh, Sean Flanagan will be walking you through quickly a kind of navigation of the website um, and your interaction with that as parents. So again, thank you for being here this morning. Thanks for your time and attention. Look forward to a great start tomorrow. Thank you.